David and Anka. Appreciate you guys inviting me back here today. I, I don't know if you noticed, but I uh, jumped all over that when you, uh, you talked about trading psychology happening today on the 17th. I was like, oh, I've got to be presenting on that one because this topic is, is so near and dear to my heart because I started the same way as everybody else. Everybody else starts trading the same way. And those that make it in this industry finally figure out that there's a connection. The weak spot is between your ears. And so what I'm going to discuss today is a little bit about my own journey. This is a little bit autobiographical. So when I talk about your seven steps to better trading results, these are at least seven of the steps that I took myself. So let's get started here. Um, I'm going to skip the disclaimer because we're not going to be talking about any trades. Uh, some of you may or may not know who I am before. I have been uh, a previous contributor for Options MD, Theo Trade, Docs Trading Tools, Options Linebacker. The current service that I provide is through ReadySet.Trade, as well as ReadySetCrypto.com. And my specialties are fractal price analysis. You guys might have seen my other presentation uh, just a couple of weeks ago. At options and futures strategies, as well as one of my specialties is about trading mindset. And because of that, this is uh, my first book, which is available on Amazon. I wrote this a couple of years ago, Hacking the Holy Grail. Because of all the lessons that I had learned, I just thought this would be, um, you know, super impactful for a lot of people. As well as the, uh, the Fractal Energy Trading book, which is my most recent one. Again, um, I am Doc at ReadySet.Trade. And I'll be your host here for the next uh, 50 or so minutes. Okay, so what is my purpose here today with you guys? I, I've been trading since every day, every single day I've been in front of a screen since 2004. And it's a lot of, a lot of screen time. And uh, during that time, I've made a lot of mistakes. A lot of, done a lot of things right, but it's seemingly even more things wrong and the difference between me and somebody who's not in the business is that I learned from those mistakes. Said, okay, boy, that was stupid. I can't believe I did that, but why did I do that? And how can I not do that again? So I went through the same journey that everybody does. It wasn't until a few years into it, I realized, and this is one thing that I wanna say here, and I want you guys to understand this. You're not really trading against the market. You are trading against yourself. You're trading against yourself. You are the number one opponent that you have to deal with. So my purpose today is to help you understand why you have been your own worst enemy when it comes to your own trading performance and what you can start to do today to fix it. That is my purpose. And we're going to have a little fun as we go through this as well. Okay, ready, set, let's get started here. I always start by defining what the problem is. So a typical engineer, right? You gotta start with a problem. I'm a problem solver. So when we have a problem, we need to figure out why the problem is happening and then how do we close that delta between what we're doing versus what we wanna do. So what's the problem here? The problem is we're all trying to solve this, this goal to improve our financial performance and the challenges that you encounter depend on where you are in your progression to mastery. And I'm going to borrow a little trading progression that was put together by Bo Yoder, oh, probably about 10 years ago or so. So Bo's been around in the business for a while. If you can, if you hunt around, you can probably find some of his work. And as, this is particularly appropriate for people trying to understand where they are in the progression of trading mastery. Everybody starts with what's called mystification. You're brand new, you don't know how markets work, you view trading as fun and exciting, you can't wait to open up your Robinhood account and start to make some money with everybody else. So more than likely you joined in during the end of a bull market. So you're unconsciously incompetent. You don't know what you don't know yet. But success comes easily and making money seems simple. You're like, what's the big deal? This is, uh, this is a piece of cake. I should be a millionaire within a year. You're sizing a Lambo for your garage. So you go all in with everything that you have. And I've even seen people put a second mortgage on their house before and go all in on that and lose it all. You get crushed when the markets turn. 
If this doesn't happen soon, it'll happen eventually if you're in this mystification stage. You don't have the skills. You don't know what you don't know yet. So that eventually will lead to what's called the hot pot stage. You know, when you were a kid, you invariably would get, uh, you're curious about what this stove was and you'd stick your hand on it and say, ouch, that hurts. And after you do it a couple of times, you learn not to touch the hot stove. We all go through the hot stove, the hot pot stage. Uh, excuse me here. So you got crushed, but you're hooked. You start to define your, your approach and learn how markets move. You wait for your setup, but like touching a hot pot in the stove, you get burned every time you enter and invariably you start getting timid. So you decided the problem is the strategy and not you, right? It's not your problem, it's a strategy, right? So you keep trying different strategies with the same results. And this is where I see a lot of traders doing the same thing here is that they'll buy a program, they'll take a couple of trades with that program, none of them work. And so they decide, well, this, this strategy is no good. Hey, look at this bright, shiny penny over here. Look at this great strategy. I can get rich overnight, literally with this one. So everybody goes thundering over here to try out this strategy, sign up for this program. So you, you get on board, you take a couple of trades with the guru, and those don't work out either. And so you're like, what is going on here? Well, this must be no good. And so you see this bright, shiny penny over here. Ooh, look at this. It's a different market. It's using a different, new, proprietary indicator, black box, only our signals can predict what's going to happen with the market. So you go thundering over here and you sign up for that program. You take a couple of trades and guess what? They don't work either. So eventually you end up right back where you started again. And, and I see traders just doing this again and again and again. They just keep going from one system to another system to another system, looking for the holy grail. Every time they touch the hot stove, they get burned, they move on. And that cycle just keeps on repeating. And the problem is, is like, if you don't break that cycle, you eventually quit. So you're in this move here where every time you enter a trade, you lose, you joke with your friends that they should take the other side of your trades. Anybody ever said that before? I'm sure a lot of people, I think I said that at one time. So you're convinced that it's somebody else's fault, the Fed, the market makers, the brokers, the gurus, High frequency traders, that's the guys that are, you know, right, whatever. The problem is, is some never exit this stage, they quit. So if, if you're convinced that the market's got it in for you, then guess what? It's got it in for you. You're not going to be able to escape this stage. And this is where you see a lot of people quit in disgust, and they usually sign off with some kind of rant and blame it on everybody else but themselves. So that's stage three. That's where I see a lot of people get stuck. But however, I see most traders get stuck in stage four, the squiggle trader stage. You buy into the notion that there must be some holy grail study or technique to trading success, right? You keep looking for it. Well, I hear this person's really good or this person. And Twitter and social media is really good at sort of stirring up the pot on this isn't that, you know, like, oh, you should be following this person, or you've got bots that are populating that sort of crap out there. But what happens is, as you learn about technical analysis, and this is how most people trade, because nobody's on the pit anymore, nobody comes in through the pit anymore, everybody's trading from home through their screens. And so we all go through TA. And what you find is you find a study that you like, but you take a loss on it and you're like, how can I avoid taking that loss? Well, I'll just add one more study to this. I'll add the ADX or I'll add the Arun or I'll add the RSI or the Stochastics or I'll add Keltner channels or Bollinger Bands on here. And next thing you know, you've got an absolute mess on your screen. And this is, this is really where people run into scared money. This is scared money. This is where you're afraid to take a trade. You're afraid to act because you're afraid of losing again. So this is the stage that I find the majority of traders stuck in. They can usually get fairly quickly through the first three stages, but they come to a, 
like this is gaping chasm that people just can't get beyond the squiggle trader stage. And you keep adding one more, one more study. And, you know, I hear this question all the time. Hey, Doc, what do you think about this indicator? What do you think in conjunction with uh, fractal energy? Can I use this indicator? Well, yeah, you can, but what are you trying to solve? So squiggle trader stage is stage four. Now here is, here's the good stuff. When you get into the next stage, this is inwardly bound. All of a sudden, you stop focusing on everybody else and everything else and all the other external distractions that we go through. And you start looking at the real cause of the problem, which is you. This is where you get inwardly bound. Traders that survive all of the previous stages have a chance to become consistently profitable if they manage to matriculate into this stage. Those in this stage finally understand that the holy grail of trading is not some study or chart pattern or strategy. It's between their ears. That's the holy grail of trading. It's their ability to understand that trading edge starts with them, their ability to think differently from the rest of the investing herd. And that's what we're gonna be talking about today. So you might say, well, Doc, that's all great. You know, thanks for the story, but I just wanna skip straight to stage five. I wanna skip all these stages. Well, unfortunately it doesn't work that way. It's kind of like, look, you can maybe go up the stairs, uh, you know, you can maybe jump up three at a time or something like that and speed up your progress up the stairs, but you're gonna go half, you're gonna have to go in a serial path. I've never seen anybody skip a stage. It's almost like you have to unlearn everything that you've learned from your childhood about several things. And we'll go into those in the seven steps today. I have seen exceptionally committed traders minimize their time in the earlier stages. There's one guy in particular that was, uh, he was a former executive in, in a business that was using supply chain automation. And so he was very used to thinking in terms of these, you know, systems and automation and everything like that. And he got it, and my God, did he get it quick, quickly. But he did have to go through all of these stages before he got to that point. So the sooner that you can get into inwardly bound stage, so that's something I want you to start thinking about today. From this moment forward, I want you to quit looking at all these other external things like Jerome Powell and market makers and HFT and you know printing money and, you know, dark pools and all this other crap that people put out there as reasons why you can't make money in the market. And I want you to start thinking internally from this moment forward because you are in charge of your own results. So now let's get into the seven steps and what you can start to do today. That's the problem. Let's go to the solution. Step one. You have to think differently about risk. What is the first thing that comes to your mind when I say the word risk? And oh, by the way, this is Alex Hunold. And for those of you that have not seen his documentary, and I believe it's actually on the uh, Disney Plus or any of those streaming services, it is unbelievable. It's probably the most compelling film that I've seen over the last uh, year or two. I, I just could not believe this thing. Here he is, he's like 7,000 feet off of the canyon floor of Yosemite. And uh, no ropes, no nothing, that's a free solo. That's the name of the movie, by the way, it's free solo. So even though I knew the end of the movie, <laughs> right? I know how it turns out, I'm sitting there squirming in my chair. But to him, what, what does, how does he view risk? How does he view risk driving? Well, he eliminated risk in the way that he trained for that climb. So a lot of you will think that right off the bat, risk is bad, right? This is what we've been taught since we were kids. Jimmy, don't run across the street. You'll get hit by a car. Risk is bad. Oh, you don't want to go out with that girl. She's risky. Oh, you don't want to get into that career. That's a risky career. You want to go into accounting. And so even though our parents loved us and they were trying to do the very best for us, Ultimately, they did you harm in terms of the way you were raised. It's not their fault. They didn't know you were going to become a traitor. But they taught you that risk was bad and that risk was something to be avoided. 
Well, guess what? We have to think differently about risk. Risk is just a tool to us. And because of that, we start trading not to lose. We start trading not to lose. You guys have heard about prevent defense, right? Prevent defense. Isn't it just annoying when you're watching a team? You're watching your team and you're up big and all of a sudden they start giving it up, giving it up, giving it up. You guys remember the Super Bowl from like three years ago where the Falcons were playing the Patriots? The Falcons were up huge at halftime. Had it in the bag. And then they started playing prevent defense. And eventually the Patriots, you just felt it coming on. You felt the Patriots wanted it just a little bit more. You felt that the, Patri the, the, the Falcons were getting scared. They ended up losing the game. So retail traders do the same thing. They trade not to lose. They don't trade to win. They trade not to lose. And it's a big, huge difference between the two. Okay, so trading not to lose, everybody does it. Because fear rules our decisions. We focus on what we fear. There's a thing, if you, any of you have ever let, learn how to ride a motorcycle, there is a phenomenon called target fixation, where you will stare at something that you're trying to avoid. And for those of you that have ridden a motorcycle before, know that you end up going where your, your vision focuses on. So you're always taught to like focus on where you want to go and not what you're trying to avoid. But people that don't go through that lesson, don't learn it, they end up riding right into a guardrail and they can't understand why they did that. We focus on what we fear. And then second is what we focus on expands. What you focus on expands in your life. If we focus on not losing, what do we get? We get more losing. We fear that rallies will leave without us. We'll get fear of missing out. We fear that sell-offs will destroy our account. We get fear of loss. Fear, you know, a lot of people say it's fear and greed. Nope, it's just fear. Fear of missing out is the same as, as some people misinterpret it as greed. Fear rules every trading decision in retail space. So we end up eating like a bird and crapping like an elephant because we're trading with scared capital. We take small profits off the table before they can reverse, but we'll ride losers forever. We'll ride them down the rabbit hole for irrational reasons. Well, I just know it's gonna reverse. You don't know that. You don't know what's gonna happen in the next two seconds. Oh, the subreddit said it would bounce. Well, what do those guys know? They don't know any more about the future than you do. Why don't you do listen to them? And then, of course, everybody says, well, it's just a paper loss now. I'm not going to actually book a loss until I get out of it. So it's just a paper loss and I wait for it to bounce. You know, look, we have to get away from that. This is why we eat like a bird, crap like an elephant. That's something that we need to stop. A lot of people will, will call me up and say, hey, Doc, what is the most conservative strategy that's out there? I don't want to lose a whole lot. You know, I want to have consistent winners and don't really want to lose. And, you know, what? What could I do to do something like that? And, and I'm like, well, dude, you need to be trading. It's called money market. It's called certificate of deposit. That's the only thing that you'll get, which, which you're looking for, right? There is no reward without risk. Risk is a tool. It's not a bad thing. So again, from this day forward, guys, I want you to look at risk as something different than something bad. Train yourself out of that association of risk being bad. Embrace the risk. It's just a tool, but manage it. That's the difference. That's what professionals do. So we end up taking trades that feel good. And my God, everybody does this, right? We take trades that feel good. We wait until everything feels just perfect. And guess what? When you're doing that, you're trading with the herd. You've got to learn to take trades that feel bad. You've got to learn to take the trades that feel bad. Like the guy that was on before me, he's taken the opposite side of the trade. That feels bad to do that, especially if you're a new trader. If you're in mystification or hot pot stage or even the squiggle trader stage, it feels bad to short the market at the highs. It feels really bad to buy the pullback until you start to do it and start to associate that with reward. 
You've got to stop taking trades that feel good and start to look for the ones that feel bad. They will be the ones that work out the majority of the time because you're going against the crowd. So you have to learn to think differently. This is what I'm talking about with step number one. We need to think about risk being our friend, not a foe. It's just a tool, something that we need to manage, not something to avoid. Now I'm asking you to go against, you know, 20, 30, 40, 50 years of preconditioning on this. So it's not something you're gonna just change overnight. But if you can recognize it, what you focus on expands. Every day, work on that a little bit. Take the trades that feel bad. That's step number one, think differently about risk. That gets us to step number two, which is specialize and focus. All of the messages out there tell you to diversify, right? Well, you must have a diversified portfolio. Well, this, I mean, that's, that's good in theory. You, you know, you don't want to put all your eggs in one basket. You don't want to be completely you know, 100% invested in one sector or one style of trading, right? But really what everybody's telling you to do is to make you a jack of all trades and a master of none. I'm gonna tell you right off the bat that if you wanna get somewhere, if you're sick of this cycle of like Sisyphus rolling the stone up the hill only to watch it roll all the way back down again, if you're sick and tired of that cycle, then you've got to specialize and focus. Let me tell you about your competition. They will typically specialize in one form of trading, one instrument, one time frame, perhaps one time of day. If you go to the SPX pit and this S, uh, CBOE, you're gonna find people that stand in one square foot of real estate, stand in the same place every day, play the same strikes and do the same exact strategy every single day. That's what they do, they're a professional. They mastered one single thing, they don't, kid themselves that they are going to trade anything else or do anything differently. They figured out one thing, it works. They'll keep doing it till they die or get kicked off the floor. They're patiently waiting for the herd to make a mistake. Overcommit in an obvious move. That's one way to do it. But they're snipers. That's your competition. Not you who's sitting there just flinging out contracts and, and trying to chase after things that are moving. So perhaps you're not focused. You've got dozens of things going on at the same time. You're trading several different strategies using different instruments and different assets and different time frames. You got 10 studies on your chart. You're wondering if you should add more. You're hoping that the winners compensate for the larger losers. And oh, by the way, you're doing this during work hours at your job, maybe from home, but it's still while you should be focusing on work and you wonder why your competition is winning. Well, you can blame it on your competition all you want to, but they'll continue to have you fund their account because you're not focused. And here's one thing, if there's one thing that I want you guys to take away from today, one simple thought, one simple visual anchor from today, it's find your one thing. Quit screwing around guys, find one thing to focus on, one thing to master, find your one thing. What I want you to do is, this came out in a movie, probably, I don't know, 25 years ago, something like that, and it's called City Slickers, but there's a scene in there which takes about maybe three minutes, it'll take three minutes of your life, but search Curly's Law in YouTube, Curly's Law in YouTube, and if you apply what happens in those three minutes, this will change your life. If you can remember one thing to do from this presentation, find that video and you'll thank me for it later. So specialize, focus, quit trying to be all things to all people, get very, very, very good at just one thing. And then there's step three, define your edge. If I were to ask most retail traders, hey, dude, tell me about your strategy. What is your edge? I'm going to get this blank look like, well, um, I use the MACD and I use stochastics and I, I'm using Bollinger Bands. No, I didn't ask you what studies you got on your chart. What's your edge against the rest of the market? And I'm going to get this deer in the headlights look like, I don't know what you're talking about, Doc. 
Well, that, that's a big problem if you don't have an edge. Then you're just trading, you're just providing liquidity to the rest of the market. So you got to figure out what your edge is. And coincidentally, your edge comes with being a master at your one strategy. Oh, by the way. But there's no trophies in this business. No trophies are awarded on how long you've been at this. A lot of people say, well, I've been doing this for, you know, 10 years, 20 years, something like that. Okay, well, is that 10 cumulative years of doing, you know, getting better at one thing? Or is it 10 years or one year of experience 10 times? Which is, in, in my mind, that's what most people are doing in this. They just keep rotating through different strategies and don't really get better at any one thing. Edge is not automatically awarded by length of service. There's your participant trophy. So we have winners and losers. Don't think of it as personal combat. A lot of people have problems with this. They come to, to trading like, you know, and they get all anguished and squishy and, and things and like, I'm taking money away from somebody that doesn't deserve that. No, forget about it. Look, it's just this big river of risk that's walking, you know, that's flowing by you. All you're going to do is just dip your thimble into there and take a little risk out of there and you'll be paid for it if you manage it correctly. That's all that you're doing. Don't think of this as winners and losers. So again, what's your edge? You gotta have an edge versus the crowd. You gotta have a competitive edge. When the crowd goes one way, what's your edge to move with or against the crowd? So for example, some people might say, well, I'm a trend trader or I'm an option seller. I sell time decay. It's a measurable edge. Okay, those are standard edges. And to some degree, those will help mathematically give you a little bit of an edge, but probably not enough to make a career out of it. Being on the other side of a panicked herd is surely the strongest edge of all. There is no substitute for being on the other side. And this is where you're going to find the biggest opportunity, the biggest payoffs and life-changing decisions is being on the opposite side of the herd when they panic. So in my mind, guys, chart studies are not enough. I, I implied this earlier, but a lot of people make this perception that, well, I've got stochastics, I've got MACD, I've got two moving averages that are showing me crossovers. So I have edge. Uh, no, they don't. They're just lagging indicators of price behavior. They don't mean anything at all, unless you've got some special way that you're interpreting those that's allowing you to forward project where you see things happening. So what's your system edge? The combination of method, this is an Alexander Eld, Elder triad. He would always draw like a, um, a step stool, three-legged step stool like this and you know, mindset, method, and money management. And if any one of them was missing, the whole step stool would fall over, right? So you've got to have that full combination of method, mindset, money management, which includes managing your risk appropriately, just might give you an edge against the rest of the market if you specialize it. You're walking a very fine line. There's only one path towards success in this business. There's no secret to it, but it's just nobody will do it, right? You got to do the things that other people won't do to make, to be successful in this business. So that's step three, that's your edge. Now we get into some fun stuff. What about creating a plan? Want to make a business of your trading? You better start planning. Those that fail to plan, plan to fail, right? So your competition has a fully vetted business plan that measures performance against targets every single day, every single day. What's your plan? Well, I plan to make money. Thanks for playing. You may continue the process of funding others' accounts. Line on the left, one cross each. So there's also leads to the trading plan. Your competition also runs by a trading plan. If the trader can't follow the plan, they'll be fired and the firm will find somebody else. That's your competition. Are you gonna fire yourself? Are you gonna do anything to yourself? You're gonna say, no, it's the market maker's fault. Oh, those damn dark pools, HFT, you know, you'll blame it on something else because you're not inwardly bound yet. So what's your trading plan? You should have one trading plan.
plan. Just one. That's all it takes. Just one for your one thing. You're only trading one strategy. Remember your one thing. Okay, so that's step four. Create your plan. It's quite simple, but nobody does it. Now we get to step five. Iterate and improve. So many of you have seen this sort of thing before. You define your goals, and then your goals get executed in the market through rules, and then you put those into the market and get some kind of results. And then you look at the results, and you compare versus the goals. And what happened? What, do we need to make corrections, or do we need to just keep on doing it? Most of the time, you'll make some type of small correction, revisit your goals. Maybe they need to be revised. Maybe change your rules. And the whole idea here is that you're spinning this thing and it ultimately gets better and better and better and better in terms of performance. If we measure performance on the vertical axis here, that's what it should do, is that you should get better and better and better at it. What most people do is that they run one cycle of this and then they run over here and then they run one cycle of something else and they run over here and run one cycle of something else and they never get additive with things. They don't iterate and improve, they iterate and quit. So if we apply this to some other analogies, why do athletes drill over and over and over again? Tiger gets off the course after shooting 18 holes and he goes right to the range because he's unhappy with, I don't know, extension or he's, not, you know, something, right? Why do people sit there and like, they know how to shoot a foul shot, they learned how to shoot a foul shot when they were seven years old. Why are they 32 years old and they're practicing foul shots? Well, they're grooming muscle memory, right? They're looking for that edge. They want to know that when the heat is on, that they relax and don't tense up. Not that I could speak for athletes, but I've, I've heard about this. Okay, so trading iterations. This is what you need to do yourself. I mean, this is one of the example tools that I use for trading markets where I'm looking for different trading rules. And if I make a violation of that trading rule, I'm gonna mark it. And then do per, a Pareto analysis later on to understand what my number one issue is that I need to work on right now. What's my number one issue that I should be working on with my one strategy? What can I change for next time? That's what iterations will do. And of course, keeping score is very, very important. Understand your performance numbers, commit to improvement. Every baseball player knows his average against every type of pitch and every location of the strike zone. They know what their batting average is against a different pitcher. They know what that pitcher is likely to, to throw on strike one or on the first pitch. You know, be a pro, keep score. Nobody else is gonna do this for you. If you work for a firm, they'll do it for you and they'll tell you what to do but you're on your own. Okay, so iterate and improve, get better with every cycle. Now we're getting up to step six. And Dave, I may be just a little early here. Build a trader's mindset. Build a trader's mindset. Mindset is everything. Now, what's the number one thing that people tell you when you get into trading, when it comes to your mindset? Well, you have to be disciplined. Be, be disciplined. Yeah, that, that's how to be successful. You'd be disciplined. So that's what people say to themselves with their, with their conscious brain. They say, okay, I, I'm going to be disciplined. Well, guess what? That's just like saying, okay, today I'm going to eat in a certain manner, right? And, the, <laughs> you know, we all know how that works out. You know, it's, that's why dieting is hard because all of a sudden the subconscious mind, like there's cherries in the freezer. They're not going to get any younger, right? So this is why you can't just force yourself to do things. It's, it's like pushing a piece of wet string across the table. Why not just pull it across instead? What you envision you can't achieve. So we need to understand what neuroscience is. Neuroscience and NLP, which is Neuro Linguistic Programming, are fairly new fields. I mean, they've been around for, you know, 20, 30 years, but 
you know, we're still dealing with intangible things. We're still dealing with issues where it's a, mostly theory and not a whole lot of applied practice that has been disseminated amongst the public. But there's tremendous leaps in progress lately. And this is something I had to dive into really deep myself because I could not understand why my brain was doing the things it was doing. If you have results that don't make sense to you, like why the hell am I doing this? Why, why did I do that? Like I, it used to happen to me all the time. Like why am I trading like an idiot? It's because I was neglecting how the brain processes information and actually risk. Right, so we have to understand neuroscience. What you focus on expands. The subconscious mind has no filter. And here's a little key for you guys. If you say to yourself, all right, that's it. No more losing trades. Only winning trades today. No more losers. That's precisely what you get. What you focus on expands. If you focus on not losing, you'll get more losing trades. The brain doesn't know any difference. And it will do what you tell it to do. It's just doing what it's being told to do. Losers. It just focuses on losers. So stop pushing that piece of string across the table. You have to retrain how your brain thinks. Your subconscious brain is the core processor of your most basic decisions. It's there to help to protect you, but it can also work against you if you don't know how to drive it right. If you get into a trade and you say, oh God, here we go again, here goes nothing, then that's exactly what you will get. It's exactly what you will get. You have to learn to retrain your brain and basically going through all the other six steps that I've been going through with you guys is what it takes. It takes all seven steps here, plus some, plus some iteration, plus focusing on one strategy and you retrain your brain away from risk. If you do the work and internalize your one strategy, you gotta prove it to the, your brain that trading does not represent a threat. Okay, so you've got to build a trader's mindset. You can't just say be disciplined. You have to pull it in that direction by thinking in the right manner. Okay, now we're getting up to step seven. And this is one which is a relatively new field of study that I haven't seen much about, but the little work that I have seen has been really, really amazing in terms of its power. And it's about habits. And what we're finding is that habits are really, the, the power of habit is what we become. We are what we repeatedly do. A habit is something where you fall back to, it's almost like your base position. When everything else, you can, you can tell yourself what you're gonna be that day, but you're always gonna fall back to your habits. Now here's the key is that your habits are something that you can change a little at a time. And this is the important thing. So one of the points here is that, okay, so let's say you're over here, you're, you know, you're at sea level and you see this huge mountain over here. See this huge mountain over here. And where most people will go after that, they, they see this mountain, they go, man, I want to climb that mountain. Then they start walking towards it, they start walking towards it, and they start going up a little bit, and they go, man, this is a long way. This is a long way. And so a lot of times people, this is called the dip. Finally, they realize that they're just not going to go through it. This is too much work. But the people that just sort of focus on putting on one foot in front of the other, next thing you know, they look, and they're up there. And it's all due to habits. So let's get into habits for a second. You don't rise to the level of your goals. So what are, what are some of the things that you're being taught to do, right? Well, you've got to set goals for yourself. Well, goals mean really nothing, right? Goals are for those that want to win once. Systems are for those that want to run repeatedly. So one of my favorite authors, James Clear, that is transformative. If you want to get better at what you do, read his book, Atomic Habits. And Scott Adams, the cartoonist, surprisingly, is very, uh, very, very good at this, this habits versus systems, right? Or goals versus systems. Goals are for losers, systems are for winners. Only Scott Adams can put it like that. 
So goals was very 1980s and 1990s. Habits are the 2020s. Everything is about habits now and making incremental improvement through habits by doing the right habits, by making these little micro adjustments. This is how people are getting successful today. So decide the type of person or role that you want to be. Prove it to yourself with small wins. What I want you guys to do is get little tiny wins every day. Every habit that you have is a vote for the type of person that you want to be. So think about what you do. Every little action is a vote for the type of person or the type of trader in this case you want to be. What would a profitable trader do? Ask yourself that. What would a profitable trader do starting tomorrow? How would they, what type of activity would they do? Would they work out or would they, what type of food would they eat? What type of habits, what type of planning would they do for the day? If you want to be a profitable trader, study profitable traders, study what habits that they do, study what actions that they do, study what systems that they have. Copy that identity. It's okay. Nobody's going to accuse you of plagiarism. And this is so important. This is so, so important for you guys. Becoming a profitable trader is not something that happens in a day. It's not a step function. It's not one day all of a sudden you wake up, bam, I'm a profitable trader today. It comes from the aggregation of marginal gains, these aggregation, these small incremental changes to these actions. Like, right, we, we, don't, we don't just put on 50 pounds in a day, do we? We put that on through all of the wrong habits and all of the wrong actions in the way that we manage our diet and our activity. By the same token, if we flip that around and losing 50 pounds comes through exactly the same things. It comes through all the right habits, all the right actions. The aggregation of all those little marginal gains will add up. Little wins add up over time. And so if you wanna get good at what you do, think small, think little adjustments. Most of us are going for those great big adjustments we're getting impatient. We have to learn to be patient and savor the process for this. Okay, so these are a couple of books that I want you guys to consider getting. Atomic Habits by James Clear and How to Fail at Almost Everything and Still Win Big by Scott Adams. It's actually a very, very good book. It's very amusing as well, too. Okay, so that is step seven. Step seven of the seven steps. Okay, so where are we? Where do you go from here? Success is a progression. I think we established that, right? There's the different elements. I would figure out where you are. Are you in the squiggle trader stage? Are you stuck at the squiggle trader? Or are you just in the hot pot stage? You keep burning your fingers every time you take a trade. You have to learn to think differently about what you're doing. Start by thinking about how you can think differently about risk. Risk is a tool, it's not something to avoid. It's something to manage, it's a tool. But man, if you don't have any risk in your trade, you don't get paid. You're being paid for taking risk out of the market. Never forget that. What do insurance companies do? They get paid for taking risk from you and they manage it appropriately. That's all that we're trying to do is become an insurance company. Narrow your focus to one thing, again, told you guys, if there's just one thing that you take away from this today, find your one thing. I literally, this is literally the one thing that changed my life was I was, I was the most voracious student when I was going through uh, my training for trading. So I knew more about more things. I could bore you to tears at a party about, you know, different options, characteristics but I wasn't making any money. I had maybe 60 trades on at one time, but I wasn't making any money. I knew how to enter, but I didn't know how to manage them successfully. I was not an expert. I was becoming a jack of all trades. And it wasn't until I got really super pissed off one day and literally swept my desk off and said, I'm gonna do one thing. I'm gonna pick that one thing, I'm gonna pick one chart, I'm gonna pick one time frame. I'm gonna pick one strategy, and I will not move until I become an expert 
and that one chart and one strategy. And wouldn't you know, within less than a year, I was done. I was handing in my notice. And that, that comes from defining your trading edge, understanding how you're gonna compete against the crowd. So once you figure that out, build your plan, work your plan, commit to continuously improving yourself. This is a business that you're running. This is not just a hobby. If you wanna run this like a hobby, then you can continue funding everybody else's account. Learn the trader's mindset. Don't just sit there with this cop out of like, well, I gotta be, uh, gotta be, uh, you know, gotta be disciplined. No, learn how to be disciplined by all these other, everything else. If you, if you understand your one thing, if you're journaling your trade, if you're running your plan, then you automatically become disciplined. You don't force discipline onto something. It comes by following a process. It follows by, follows the system. And progress comes with habits. Those little micro adjustments that you're going to make every single day. That's the reason why they put a steering wheel on a car, right? It doesn't just go straight until you hit something like the bumper cars. So you might be wondering how you can get started on your own path through these steps. It's great to feel motivated towards a direction, but you may not have the map to get there. This is what I had to sort of build myself over a number of years. That's why I get so fired up talking about this stuff. So how can you get started? Well, I would say consider joining our community. This is what Ready, Set, Trade is here for. We're a community of traders of very cool folks who seek high probability, low risk trades in the options and futures markets. And we're just trying to earn our fair share. We're not trying to, you know, like brag about how much we made today or tomorrow because those are short lived. We're just trying to make our fair share on a daily basis. So we provide the structure and guidance to show how to quickly come up to speed on things like fractal energy trading, high probability option strategies, plus all these other intangibles that I'm talking about here today that are so necessary for success. To me, it's the most important part. The strategies, eh, that's 10%. Strategies and technicals, that's maybe 10% of success. Everything else, 90% is between your ears. Never forget guys, goals are for people who care about winning once. Build a system. So what we do at Ready, Set, Trade, we just have, I mean, we've got, we've, uh, I've been doing this now for 15 years. This is something that we've just decided to start doing about six months ago. And it's, uh, it's already exceeded my expectations of this, but just uh, the amount of material that we have and the breadth of the, of what we're bringing to bear on the market. So we do eight hours a week of, of live trading, five days a week. Five days a week, we're doing a daily newsletter, a live online community, everybody can talk to each other. Live trade notifications like these here, $100 a day course, if you wanna know how to make 100 bucks a day, there is a process for doing something like that, okay? We have a lot of other courses on all the lessons that I've learned over the years. And, you know, that plus you've got a community of very smart people that are out there as well, too. So it's, it's important that you don't try to reinvent the wheel on your own with this. Join a community and you'll proceed and progress much, much faster. Okay. So uh, let's see. I went backwards. So what... Um, what I've got for you guys today is I've condensed everything that I've talked about. So the seven steps, I've got this as what I call the Trader's Edge program. So I've, I've condensed everything I've talked about today into one class. And it's called the Secret to Trading, How to Gain Edge Like a Professional. So we've got it on sale for $49.99. It's about 50 bucks until Monday. Uh, and then after that, it's going to go up to $100. So it's a one-time payment. There's no obligation beyond that. If you want to grab your session, act today. So you might want to ask what's in the course. So here's the module list of what this is. And we start things off by saying, why traders suck at making money in the market? Because we do. When we start off trading, we are terrible at this. We give away more money than we make, right? So why does that happen? You have to understand why that's happening and then start going through, finding your one thing, creating your edge, building your business plan. So this is 
it's kind of a 10 step how to do it, how to do it, how to get edge in the marketplace. So these are all these like, you must be disciplined, you know, look, that doesn't work. These are all the lessons that I've had to learn through the years for me to make this work. So if you want to know what that link is, again, it's up here at uh, elite.readyset.trade. I'm going to push this into the room. Oh, David's already got it out there. David, you're a rock star. So if you guys go out to the actual page, what you'll see is an elite.readyset.trade. Okay, so just go down here and just choose this membership plan. That's it. You know, if you want to join our service, you, you're welcome to join our service, and then you get the course in there included. And it's 79 a month. But, you know, I just want to, just trying to do one thing here today. And that's uh, get you guys across the hump with the Trader's Edge program. So that is all I had for today. And I hope that makes sense for you guys. Uh, please don't miss the discount. I'd love to see you in the program because I know how much this is going to make a difference for you guys. And this is, uh, of everything that I teach, this is the one thing that people keep coming back to me that have known me for the last 10, 15 years, and they're like, oh, man, that, that material that you did in this, in this course is the most impactful stuff. Like, how did you know I was doing all that crap? And I'm like, no, because everybody's the same. It's not like I just built this for me. I built this for everybody. Everybody has the same issues, and that's why we're here today with Timing Research, with David and Anka, and trying to get better at this stuff. So I am available for any questions before the next presenter comes along. I'd be happy to answer anything for you guys. Thank you very much, Peter. Thank you, Mark. <laughs> I'm catching up to all the comments here. Sorry, guys. I wasn't... You're welcome. Hey, Doc, thank you so much for your presentation today. It was uh, right spot on. Well, thank you, Anka. It's awesome. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed it, too. Uh, and David has posted the link 